Germany has just agreed to send its heavy tanks to Ukraine to fight against Russia. America followed suit, committing over 30 powerful Abraham tanks to the conflict. Let me think, when was the last time Germany sent tanks to Russia? Hmm. Well, that would be the Great Patriotic War, World War II. And what was the result of this German invasion? 27 million Russians lost their lives. 27 million now is just a number written down on a piece of paper. But each of these 27 million represented a dream, a love, a life that was extinguished by fascism. And Germany again comes with its NATO allies to support the fascists in Ukraine. The media in the West has been selling false information. The United States and Europe governments continue to lie. But I don't like to play games and argue about what's right, what's wrong, who's honest, who's being dishonest. It's best just to look at the facts. When someone makes a promise or expresses an opinion, wait and see, look what their actions are. You will not have to wait very long to guess their true intentions. Soon, everything will be perfectly clear. So let's start in 1990 at the end of the Cold War. America promised Russia if it pulled its forces out of East Germany, the NATO would not expand one inch east. Since then, NATO membership has almost doubled to include 30 different countries today. Then, NATO promised never to include any former USSR republics. That promise was broken as well. Estonia, Lithuania, and Latvia were added to NATO, and promises of NATO membership extended to Georgia and Ukraine. So, the United States has been saying all along that America's goal was to protect the people of Ukraine just to protect the people. The Western media sells this narrative of America being the protective big brother. But just last week, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin revealed the truth. He said in an interview, and I quote, America is happy to fight this war in Ukraine, over there, meaning not near America. Doesn't sound like the words of someone who doesn't want a war. And in another interview, Ukraine Defense Minister Oleski Reznovic said the reality was Ukraine was already a de facto member of NATO. This is the opposite of everything America and NATO have been saying from all along. And finally, NATO claims it is a defensive alliance. It claims to only serve and defense the NATO member countries. Tell that to Serbia, tell that to Libya, tell that to Syria, and now explain that to the people of Donbass who are being shelled by NATO bombs and missiles every single day and have been for the last eight years. Given these facts, NATO and America promises meaning nothing. NATO is an indeed an aggressive military alliance, and Ukraine has already been accepted as an unofficial member of NATO. What should Russia's response to a NATO-supported Ukraine at its border fully encircling Russia with military bases around the Black Sea? Ukraine, a country that continues to attack the people in Donbass in an unprovoked war it started eight years ago. Ukraine, whose leader, Vladimir Zelensky, jailed and disbanded oppositional political parties, blocked dissenting media outlets, banned the Russian language, and allows Nazi battalions in the Ukrainian army, bans religion, and now publicly calls for NATO to provide nuclear weapons for Ukraine. The West acts surprised by Russia's special military operation. But the truth is, they knew this would be Russia's response. NATO has been arming Ukraine since the coup in 2014. NATO was hoping this would be Russia's response. Then the American weapons manufacturers could make billions supplying weapons to Ukraine, and American energy companies could profit as well by replacing Russia as Europe's energy supplier all the while hurting Russia's economy and increasing American hegemony. So, why all the broken promises? Why all the lies and misinformation? Well, that's where you come in. If America told the truth, yes, we will expand NATO. Yes, we will add former Soviet republics to NATO. We will support Ukraine despite its fascist president with the Nazis. We have been financially supporting the invasion of Donbass. And yes, we do want this war because we're making billions and billions from it. It would be impossible to get support from the people, from you, for such aggression, for such greed and complete disregard for humanity. So 
given the decades of broken promises to Russia, the history of Germany's invasion that many Russians living today witnessed firsthand. Even Vladimir Putin was affected. His brother was a victim during the siege of Leningrad. Ukraine denying its own people basic freedoms while it bombs civilians every day in its former republics. And America's enthusiasm for weaponizing Ukraine. I think you can understand Russia's reluctance to believe America NATO this time when they say they want peace.